Imagine feeling nausea or seeing spots, flashing lights, and feeling a blinding pain in your temple. These and other debilitating symptoms are common for migraine sufferers like our first guest today. Stay with us. I'm Mike Tucker, and we're here to help you create your best life possible. This is Lifestyle Magazine with your hosts, Dr. Sharmini Long, Obi OBDK, Lionel LaMountain, and Mike Tucker. Migraines can wear you down fast. Our guest today, actress Jackie Zeman, who you know from General Hospital and The Bay, shares her tips on how to make it through the pain. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're honored to have you. So when did you first start having migraines? Oh, gosh. <sighs> Years ago. Years ago. Years All right. ago. As a as a older teenager. Okay. Uh, it started, and I have to tell you, I haven't had one in a very long time. Wonderful. So when I got the call to come and do the show, I was like, well, maybe I'm not really the right person. Maybe mm. we need somebody who's more in the moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I'm I'm happy to be here today because I think it. You know, my story is that it gives people hope. They don't necessarily last your whole life. When oh, that's you good. wonderful to know. Yes, that is we good. were just discussing yes. for you too. Yeah. Same yes. thing. Yeah, I had migraines when I was seven and onward, and then they went away when I got pregnant with our first child. So, huh. that's very so did you know when your migraines were coming on? Um, occasionally. So, not, but not always. Sometimes not always, it was a, no. a, a big surprise. It was a big surprise. Yeah. And uh, what I learned, and at the time I didn't even know, you know, triggers, and I think we should maybe could talk a little bit about that yeah. as we do the show, but I, I didn't necessarily know what the triggers were. Mm -hmm. uh, but now that I look back, I realize, like I did know, uh, light, okay? Mm -hmm. I had a job where I would get up at four o'clock every morning, yeah. go to my soap opera, and so when I would go to work, it was dark. Yeah. And I would get to the lot, and I would run the lot and learn my lines in the dark. That was not a problem. But the time that I would get off, I would be driving into the sun every day as I was oh, going wow. home for an hour and a half because I was yeah. shooting in Hollywood, yeah. and I was living in Malibu, and the whole way was at, you know, yeah. 101 into the sun. Mm -hmm. And I used to literally sit there and drive my car like this because I'd be like, please, please, God, don't let me get... <laughs> uh, get a migraine, yeah. I get yeah. home, you know, and that would instigate that. Oh. That and um, stress. Yes. Stress. stress. <laughs> Ugh. For me, that was a really big one because in those days, you know, I was a mom. I had my daughters, Cassidy and Lacey, who were young. Mm -hmm. I was working five days a week on the show. I was like 35 to 50 pages of dialogue every day. I was oh trying my. to be a good wife, a mom. Yeah. You know, I had my dogs. I had my. <laughs> I, I felt like. I didn't have a minute ever to myself, and I'm not complaining because I was very, very happy, but I was, I was, was in turning. gear. Always I was turning. like the gerbil on the wheel. I never got yeah. off the wheel, yeah. and I didn't realize that that was adding to it. Hmm. In retrospect, do you think there were things that you were doing with your diet that might have been triggering migraines as well? Oh, yeah, and I, that's another thing. I didn't know. Cheese, cheese, and I'm still the cheese, cheese with every meal. Because <laughs> yeah, I yeah. had a meal where I didn't have cheese. Wonderful. I have a glass of wine every night. Mm -hmm. You know, before uh, pretty much si five to six nights a week, I have a glass of wine every night before dinner. Um, coffee. Um, I was eating salt, mm -hmm. salami, mm -hmm. processed. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's so a lot on the set. Coffee. Yeah. Y you know where we worked. The coffee, they would take five. Every hour we would get a five minute break and go straight to the, you wouldn't even think, do I want a cup of coffee? You just go get just a cup of coffee. Just did it. Just did it. Yeah. what we did. Yeah. yeah. And those are all things that can trigger migraines. Which can. And um, I did exercise. That's the one thing. I, yeah. I would run every day, three yeah, miles every morning. Yeah. You know, it was, my, I would learn my lines while I was running. But that was a good thing. Now, some people I've heard will say that exercise can trigger a migraine. Mm. And for some people, it keeps you from having them. Okay. I think it kept me from having them. Is that right? Yeah, I, I think it was I think it was very lucky in that respect. Mm. Can you describe what it's like to have a migraine? Because there may be people who don't really know what a migraine yeah, is. I've like. never had one. I, I don't know what it what it means. Yeah, you but you're lucky then. Yeah. Yeah, you're lucky. Well, you know, there's all different kinds and everybody will say they have different kinds of symptoms. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you're asking this because there seems to be a stigma attached to um, People who get migraines, they don't want to say they get them. They don't want to talk about them. You're perceived as being weak in the workplace oh, if you really? get migraines. You know, they might be, a company might not want to hire you because mm -hmm. some people can't work when they get a migraine. Mm -hmm. You become MIA. And 
that obviously companies aren't going to. So I don't think they would technically tell you that the reason they wouldn't hire you mm -hmm. or you could lose a job is because of a migraine. But if it were going to interrupt your work enough, I'm sure yeah. it would. And yeah. So that's why it's it's not the kind of thing that people will volunteer. Right. Yeah. right. So um, I don't know. You asked me. Yeah, but so I didn't ask. But what's it like? What's it oh, like? Oh, when you. Well, for me. Um, I would get little, I could get flashes of mm -hmm. light, almost like a, I don't know, it's a, it's a weird thing, like a flash, sparkle. Of, like a sparkle. sparkle. And I, I didn't, in the beginning, realize that that was like the clue that it was coming. It took like, <laughs> I can tell you, mm -hmm. quite a few years before I figured out that that meant it was coming. Mm -hmm. um, a certain amount of stress, a certain amount of all of a sudden feeling like, something was sitting on my head, something was pushing on my eyes, mm. on my forehead. Really? You know, that, he yeah, like a heaviness, like, mm. Mm, like that. Mm. Instead of like opening up, closing in, it would feel like that. Mm. So you've, you've had, you had these for years, you finally figured out what was going on. What kind of things did you do to help relieve this? Uh, well, exercise, I think, has been, for me, a mainstay, and I still, to this day, even though I haven't had a migraine in a long time, um, I still, you know, run every day. Good for you. Exactly. I heard I never miss. It can be pouring rain. I still run. You still run. People say, how can you run in the rain? I'm like, well, I have to shower anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the difference? Yeah. I think diet has been helpful. I mean, I still, I, I'm blessed, but because of my exercise, I feel like I can eat pretty much mm -hmm. anything that I want. Mm -hmm. I don't drink as much coffee as I used to, mm -hmm. um, but I still have like, like a half a cup every morning mm -hmm. of my coffee. Mm -hmm. And then I try, not, you know, every once in a while, if I'm having like a really good meal or I'm in a restaurant, you want to mm -hmm. prolong the dinner, we'll have some coffee, mm -hmm. you know, with dessert. But I don't drink coffee anymore without um, having food with it. That's all right. Okay. Yeah, in those days it used to be coffee and not no, eat yeah, with it. I don't think else, that's yeah. good. And I think for me it was an age thing. It was a hormone thing because when they stopped, I had my children older in life. I was 38 and 40 when I had my daughters. Mm -hmm. And um, and then all of a sudden, um, I went through menopause mm -hmm. uh, 10 years later, mm -hmm. and they stopped. Hmm. Wonderful. That was it. That's good. That's and good. so for you know, women out yeah. there, yeah. I just want to tell you women out there who get them, that can happen for you too. It can happen. You, know, yeah. you can, can go change. through 10 or 20 years yeah. and get them, and then all of a sudden they're gone, yeah. and all of a sudden you realize one day you go, wow. I haven't had one of those in a long time. <laughs> I guess yeah. I don't. And Thank you goodness. put yourself in the, I don't get them anymore box. Yeah, that's, that's a nice box to be in. <laughs> Well, right now we're in the I gotta take a break box. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we'll be back right after this. Stay with us. There's more Lifestyle Magazine coming up. We've been talking with actress Jackie Zeman about her migraine experience, and now we're joined by migraine expert Dr. Rich Hershinger. And also joining us are Lionel and Obi. Uh, Dr. Hershinger, thank you for being here with us. Oh, my pleasure. I understand that there are different types of headaches. Can you help uh, elucidate us? There's basically four different categories of what we call primary headaches, which are headaches that aren't caused by other factors. Okay. Uh, migraine, tension type headache. Uh, there's a group of headaches called the trigeminal autonomic cephalogies. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are all one-sided. And then there's a group of 10 other headaches, like stabbing headaches, sexual headaches, primary exercise headaches uh -huh. and about seven other headaches in that category. Wow, that's incredible. What's the difference between a headache and a migraine? <clears throat> well, the difference between other headaches and migraines, one of the things that really makes a migraine stand out is probably the severity of it. Mm -hmm. uh, patients can end up in the emergency room. Wow. Uh, you don't always have to have nausea. People think you have to have nausea with a migraine, but you don't have to have it, but you uh, need to have light and sound sensitivity or nausea and or vomiting. Mm. Uh, and then okay. you need two of these four for it to be categorized as a migraine, oh, really? such as it has to be one-sided, it has to be pulsating, uh, classified as moderate to severe, and then either aggravated with exertion or the avoidance thereof. What triggers a, a migraine? Are there any things that uh, just, what, what can we do to prevent getting a migraine, you say? I, I don't know if you can really truly prevent just listening to your segment about <laughs> you know what the triggers are. Yeah. You, can, you can try and avoid some of the triggers, but uh, some patients, there's just a genetic predisposition mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. getting headaches. But uh, certainly uh, walking through the migraine counters at department stores can be, I mean, through the uh, 
The, the perfume, perfume counters, <laughs> counters. yeah. They do seem really and that's migraine. another good name. <laughs> <laughs> migraine counters, yeah. You know, some people call them perfume counters, and others right. call them migraine counters. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, altitude. You know, if you if you live at sea level and yeah. you go up to a higher altitude, just you the barometric pressure, even just a, a change in weather, yeah, can change it. You know, flying can right. do it. Foods can do it. Wow. That's incredible. You know, you said something that probably every man who's watching this show might, might have picked up on a word that you said very fast. You said sexual headaches? There, there's a headache called a primary sexual headache. These poor people actually get a headache at orgasm. Really? Yeah. Of all things. Huh. Hmm. Well. No. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, we, we, can, we can treat that with uh, a medication called endomethacin. It's an anti-inflammatory. If you know that an hour before you uh, get intimate, take the medication and it can usually help. Well, l let's talk a little bit about some of the treatments then. What do people take in order to deal with, with the pain of the migraine? There's two categories of medications or we're gonna either call them preventative, which is patients that have a chronic migraine, which we classify as 15 or more a month. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put them on a preventative because they're just mm -hmm. getting headaches mm -hmm. every other day or more. Uh, if you don't have chronic headaches, which we classify as less than 15 a month, mm -hmm. then we're going to probably give you what's called an abortive, something that you take after you get the headache. Okay. All right. And are, are, how effective are those? It all depends. It, there's categories of medications that are designer medications designed to go after migraines called triptans. Mm -hmm. We have seven of them. Mm -hmm. And we like to try at least three before we say you're not going to be responding to the triptans. There, okay. There's one, a new delivery system that came on the market last month. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very unique delivery system. The medication has been used for years, mm -hmm. but the delivery system is basically breath powered. So you blow it into your nostril through oh. your mouth. Come on. That closes off the soft palate and the medication stays in the nasal passages as opposed to sniffling okay. it where it tends to go back down the throat. Can oh, having a sports related concussion lead to migraines? Yes. It can. Yeah, it can. It can lead to headaches. Yeah. You know, well, and it's just—it's a question of, of what kind of headaches. Yeah, I, I would say you know definitely. Uh, yeah. Basketball player Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Wade is a migraine sufferer, and he's yeah. missed basketball games, some yeah. very important games, because he yeah, has migraines. Migraine. But you just triggered a very important thought. Then, are there different types of migraines? You said there are a lot of different types of headaches, but what about—is there just a migraine or many types of migraines? There, there's many types of migraines. We categorize them whether they're chronic or episodic based on the number, 15 or more. Mm -hmm. A month is chronic, less than 15 is episodic. And then we categorize them whether there is an aura or aura. not, an aura. aura. And there are different types of auras. There's what we call visual auras, when mm -hmm. patients see something extra, like in, they can see lights. What she was describing was what we call a positive visual aura. Mm -hmm. She saw something extra in her mm -hmm. vision. Uh, there are some negative auras where you can have a dark spot, like maybe lose 5% of your field of vision. Mm. Really? Uh, there's auras that are, we call them uh, sensory, so you can kind of feel tingling kind of coming up your arm, into your jaw, into your mouth. Sometimes it can cause what we call aphasia or the inability to speak. Okay. And then there's uh, motor auras as well, where you just have you know, kind of like a real temporary inability to move your muscles. Are glaucoma patients more prone toward migraines because they lose some of their perception? You said field of vision? That's a good question. I don't know. Okay. So you have a good question once in a while. <laughs> I, I know you do. I know you. I saw a video clip about a, a reporter doing a live report who had a migraine and the speech became uh, mm. jumbled, and it was simply because of the migraine. Wow. And uh, well, it was on TV. Uh, on TV, it was a live report, wow. and all of a sudden the speech became jumbled, and so they they switched to another reporter. Obviously, went to someplace else. That thing got played over and over it again is. on social the, the media. Re the reporter yes. was Serene Branson for a local okay. CBS station, and she had never had an aura before. Mm -hmm. And she was live at the Grammys. This was about 2011. And right when the camera switched on, she started to speak, but it was complete gibberish. Wow. She didn't realize it. Everybody thought she was having a stroke. Yeah. But if you look at the video on YouTube, you're going to see she's blinking very uh -huh. uh, s symmetrically, smiling very symmetrically, and she looks great. But yeah. she just can't speak. Wow. wow. Just can't speak. Well, it, you know, it's uh, amazing to me the, the type of damage, uh, certainly temporary, that this can do to people. Just simply make them incapacitated, unable to speak like they normally would. 
So this is a serious issue, isn't it? Oh, it really is. I mean, your typical migraines last between four and 72 hours. Oh, my. Come on. So a long time. it can put somebody out for several days. Four to 72 hours. Well, all right. We're going to take a break on that. And we will be right back with more after this. Lifestyle Magazine. We'll be right back. We're talking with actress Jackie Zeman and migraine expert Dr. Rich Hershinger about migraines. Doctor, off camera, we were talking about a treatment for migraines that seems a bit unconventional, but yet is current and breakthrough, and that's Botox? Correct. How, do, how does that work? Uh, basically, what Botox does, it prevents the release of a certain neurochemical that prevents the muscle from contracting. Mm -hmm. And they, it was kind of found out by accident that if you inject in certain areas, there's about 15 areas, middle of the head, mm -hmm. forehead, in the temporalis region here, mm -hmm. as well as the back of the neck and along the shoulders. It's a series of 31 injections that it can abort migraines for patients that are chronic sufferers for three months and sometimes longer. Wow. Are different groups of people affected, or is it uh, is any one group of people affected more than another when it comes to migraines? Well, there's usually always a genetic component. Okay. And women are more prone than men after uh, teenage years. Mm -hmm. Young boys can get it a little bit, even a little bit more than women, you know, uh, mm -hmm. right before, the, you know, their teenage years. Yeah. And then, obviously, there's clearly a hormonal component because women certainly <laughs> surpass men once we get past the teenage years as being, you know, migraines. This study like with Botox, how many people were involved in the study? Is this 100% that this actually temporarily works? No, it's not 100%. Okay. It's actually probably closer. It's nationally, it's somewhere around 30, 35% effective. Okay. So it's not used as a first yeah. choice. Yeah. It's but I just don't want to see people go just, oh, let's get the Botox right now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> take the migraines away. Like, what yeah. is the percentage? Yeah. So that, right. that's where I was at. There's, yeah. a, there's a lot of other medications that we'll use first yeah. just okay. because it, it's not that effective. It's also expensive. Yeah. yeah. Jackie, uh, you, uh, you said that you had a, a pretty severe migraines, but and they were when you were younger. Mm -hmm. Was there any history of migraine in your family? That not you that know? I know of. So you were really kind of a lone sufferer that there, I, wasn't yeah. there an inherited trait for you? I mean, they say it's in the genes, you know, that yeah. usually it runs in the family, but my mother didn't and her mother didn't. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. Charmony, for you? No one else in the family had All right. Migraines. So it's, it's not 100% uh, when it comes to being an inherited trait, is it? Yeah, not necessarily. No. It's that throwback thing, you know, they say it's throwback. <laughs> okay, so maybe Some someone first. Just a relevant back. Generations back. Uh, <laughs> generations back. Uh, <laughs> that could be. You had said that, that you uh, <laughs> were getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to the set. So, yeah. how does sleep mm. play into migraines? Uh, sleep schedule or hours of sleep, does that have any effect on migraines? Mm. Absolutely. For the patients that are sufferers of migraines, we really recommend they try and keep their schedule as consistent as possible. Mm. Mm. The same amount of hours of sleep. Hydration is really important. Huh. Uh, a lot of patients, you know, enjoy drinking alcohol. And I just recommend, you know, if you're going to drink, follow it or precede it with a glass of water for every glass that you consume. Really? Okay. But it'd be better not to drink. I would. Yeah, I would. If you find out that alcohol is a trigger, mm -hmm. You have then, to. Then why do it? You're choosing your poison. Yeah. yeah. You know you're going to get a headache. Yeah. That's you know you're choosing to get the headache. Uh, what percentage of people you think in, in the United States suffer from this? Oh, percentage-wise, that, that's a. Uh, it's a tough thing. To, it's a to tough call. thing, but I mean, there's usually I think the numbers in the U.S. are somewhere around 28 to 30 million people. That's a lot of people. Uh, that is a lot of people. And uh, any other treatments that are cutting edge that are coming on uh, other than Botox? Well, they're doing some research going after other various pain receptors. And some of the, uh, one of the pain mediators is something called CGRP. And we don't have any medications to go after those, the mm -hmm. blocking of those or to treat those receptors. Uh, but it's in the pipeline and it's probably about two or three years away from hitting the market. Are there any addiction uh, cautions people should have with these medications for migraines? I wouldn't say addictions, but with the triptans, which we prescribe to abort the headaches, we don't like patients taking more than nine a month oh, really? because that can cause what we refer to as medication overuse headache. Mm -hmm. Your brain's getting used to being fed this medication, huh. and if you take more than nine a month, you can get a medication overuse headache. It's even the same with some of the over-the-counter medications. Some of the over-the-counter medications that, that have 
combination medications, aspirin, caffeine, Tylenol, those can cause medication overuse just by taking them a couple times a week. Mm. Just a couple times a week? Yes. Okay. Any other side effects from some of the, the medications that we need to be aware of? Well, there, there's always side effects to every medication. Okay. Uh, some of the triptans can cause a real chest tightness. Patients can actually feel like they're having a heart attack if they're not aware that it's just the medication okay. getting into their system. Yeah. Uh, you can get facial flushing. Uh, sometimes they can affect your blood pressure, but it's just talk with your doctor mm -hmm. and understand what the possible side effects are so that you're not concerned. So it's like any other medication. I mean, there's a positive outcome, but there's also the potential for side effects. We just need to be aware of what right. those are. But one of the things we really don't like is having patients read everything online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a certain blood pressure medication <laughs> where one of the side effects is constipation. Yeah. And one of them is diarrhea. Oh yeah. No. You can't have both. You can't. Yeah. But they're both listed oh, as a side list, effect. Listed. All right. Well, we'll we'll end this segment on that note. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back with a final word right after this. Lifestyle Magazine. We'll be right back. fascinating conversation and as we close Jackie do you have any word you'd like to say to anyone who's having uh, having migraines well yeah one that they don't necessarily last forever yeah. you know they go for some people they go 10 years 20 years and then they can completely go away because as hormones and things change mm -hmm. life, changes. life changes and also not to have the fear to talk about it okay. I think there is such a stigma attached and we have to change that and by talking about it you meet up with other people that are in the same situation and you get ideas and ways of different thi things that you can do that yeah. can be very helpful Dr. Hershinger anything else to add to that oh I would just echo what Jackie said in the sense that talk about it okay. and you're going to find out you know is it a migraine yeah. or is it some other type of headache because right. it needs to be di you know properly diagnosed and, and get get some help from your doctor yes all right thank you so much for being here we appreciate it and thank you for being here as well we look forward to seeing you again next time but until then you take care of yourself bye-bye <laughs> To get a copy of today's offer, call 888-940-0062 and be sure to visit our website at lifestyle.org.